Uh, yeah. This one right here is an O. Hey guys, to the, uh... today I'm going to do a review of the AKG K702 65th Anniversaries. So these headphones uh, retail between four and five hundred dollars. There isn't much of a price control AKG puts on its products, but you can usually find them around that price. If you shop around, you might find them under four hundred for used. Um, they're a limited production of 3,000 units. This is uh, a later production. They just went out of um, production in late 2012 or maybe a few months ago. So, um, But you can still find some new units. Now these headphones are handmade at AKG's Acoustics Plant in Vienna, Austria. They come with a interesting uh, little instruction booklets or, or booklet of um, AKG's previous models but they don't come with a bunch of goodies unfortunately they don't come with the carrying pouch or the um, coil cable like the newer version of these or the mass production version the AKG K712 Pro does so just what you see here is what you get now they are composed primarily plastic but they're still well made they're very very highly engineered with their production process. They have a, a gray and black motif with electric blue um, rings around here. You have um, a genuine leather headband with electric blue stitching and unlike the uh, siblings, this the K701, the K702, and the Quincy Jones Q701, you don't have headband bumps. So if that bothered you with those models, this might be just your answer. The ear pads are also a little bit different. They are um, velour or crushed velour, but they are, uh, they're not angled though, but you do have memory foam this time. So, as ear pad comfort goes, they're pretty um, big on the ears. They're big headphones in general, but um, with my left ear, it, it tends to um, protrude more from my head than my right ear, so I did get a little bit of finicky. Um, fit with here. Sometimes it would touch the uh, the driver padding, but it's padded so it's not going to be a hard surface. It just gets a little bit annoying. So, But otherwise, I these are extremely comfortable headphones to use, and they're not all that grippy either. They're just enough to stay on your head, but not a vice grip like some Biodynamics and the Sennheiser HD 650s are. Now, the cable is a 3 meter cable, or about 10 feet. It's terminated to a three and a half millimeter mini plug with an included screw on 6.3 millimeter stereo plug adapter for mixing consoles or hi-fi units or amplifiers or receivers and at the headphone end it's terminated into a single connection or single side connection with a mini XLR jack it's a three pin one and you can see its pins are up in the headphone body itself Now, as sound signature goes, these are still, um, just like most K700 models, like the ones I mentioned before, these are still uh, a kind of a lean, analytical, mids-centric headphone, but they're almost more of a Sennheiserized sound. And by that I mean that they are a very, very polished, lean, or kind of a, still lean, but um, a laid-back kind of sound. The bass is increased by about three decibels, and that makes them more rounded for listening to rock and listening to um, music from you know, North Africa and Middle Eastern music, and makes them better for jazz than uh, the normal Q701s or the K702s. Now the trade-off is you don't get quite as wide a soundstage, but you get much more intimate and somewhat realistic soundstage. For certain types of genres that are recorded mono, like uh, especially if you listen to a lot of Rolling Stones or Beatles stuff, that hasn't been remastered to stereophonics. The problem with the regular K700 models, like the K701, is that um, because the sound stage is so wide, you end up with a very, very diffused sound signature where you get instruments on the left, vocals on the right, and you just get a completely lost detail in the center. These are much better in that sense, and they're a little bit more cohesive in the center stage, which makes them uh, more forgiving with mono recordings. Now, the bass slam itself, moving up to treble, um, the bass is warmer. Well, I actually say it's a bit thicker. These are still not warm headphones, but it's thicker. It's uh, a little bit more present. It makes the headphone a little bit more of a 
thicker body to it, but it's still not a, a kind of a slamming bass, so you're not going to want these for listening to anything with kind of a bassy emphasis. These are mids-oriented headphones. Now, as far as synthesized bass goes, you are not going to like these headphones. They don't like synthesized bass whatsoever. They just just sound too uh, 2D and untextured. If you really want good performance, you're going to need to run these on files that are uh, recorded with live instruments. And even then, your bass performance is really going to depend on how well the track was mastered and your system. I'll go over uh, amplifiers later, but if the song wasn't meant to have a lot of bass in it, you're not going to hear it. Or if it, a lot of bass wasn't uh, mastered properly, or mastered improperly, you're going to get a lean experience. These don't sugarcoat extra bass in your sound. They are very, very honest headphones. Now mids, uh, mids are very silky, they're very intimate, they're very smooth, but um, they are not necessarily something that stands out as being really hyped or aggressive, but they are a great fixture in the sound. You hear everything, they're never shouting the upper mid-range, so they're excellent for female vocalists like Adele, and uh, they're great with saxophones and trumpets, which I find can be a little bit way too aggressive, especially with the Q701 Quincy Jones that I owned um, at one time. So mids are nothing to complain about at all. They're excellent. Now treble. The treble is dark on these headphones. It's not softened. It's not uh, uh, slightly rolled off. It's just dark in general. Which makes these headphones very, very forgiving with um, maybe slightly sibilant music. And they're not going to hurt your ears at all. They're not irritating. Some people might find the treble a little bit uh, lacking in sparkle. Or maybe a bit too polite. Uh, for me, they're a little bit on the laid-back side for my liking, but uh, they're still, you know, great headphones to use with um, pretty much any recordings, since they're not going to be overly sibilant, and as a result, they're better rounded for long-term use. Now, these headphones are very excellent in general, however, they're not for people who want to have a more aggressive sound signature. They are uh, laid-back, lean-sounding headphone with kind of a, a thick and intimate sound signature. If you want something that's maybe more, um, a little bit more hyped sounding, or maybe a, a little bit more, uh, more warm sounding, you might be better off with the Sennheiser HD 650s. If you want something that's really wide and maybe uh, even leaner, consider the AKG Q701 Quincy Jones, since they're cheaper than the K702s and basically the same headphone aside from just a color scheme. And if you want something kind of similar to that lines of the Q701, but maybe um, a little bit more forgiveness and um, uh, sound signature, you also should look at the Sennheiser HD 600s. But if you just want something that's dark and rather analytical, then you're really going to like these headphones. Now, as for amplification, these are 62 ohm headphones, but they're low uh, sensitivity, which means they need a lot of current to run on. So sorry, you're not going to just buy these and plug them into your iPod and you'll be good. They just sound terrible plugged into an iPod. Well, they just don't sound dynamic at all and they're rather crunchy and harsh. So um, these headphones love current. So if you um, have an amplifier, make sure or you're in the market for one, make sure it's an amplifier that puts out a lot of current. You can use something like the FIO E07K, which can be purchased for about $90, but you're not going to really get the most experience out of the DAC, or the headphone amplifier in this. It's got a good DAC as well, but if you're looking for a good amplifier to go with these, I suggest looking at um, uh, an amplifier that can handle sub-100 ohm headphones, like the Shit Audio um, Lear, which is a hybrid tube amplifier. You can also look at what I have, which is the Maverick Audio Tube Magic A1. That's a very good amplifier as well. It retails for about $199, excuse me, and I have the $40 upgrade to the tubes. But in, if you really want the most amount of um, uh, power to these headphones, you're better off with a solid-state amplifier. A good solid-state amplifier would be the Shit Audio Magni for $100, the Shit Audio Asgard 2 for $250, and if you really, really want to get crazy, then maybe something like the $2,000 SPL Phonitor, but you don't need something that crazy for 
a headphone like these. These don't need the most amount of current to go, but they do like their current. So, overall these are a great pair of headphones, but just make sure you have good songs to play for them, and just make sure you're not a bass head, and also a good amp to use. Alright, thanks for watching. Okay guys, so I really, really hope that you guys enjoyed Brian's uh, review. Uh, if you did, go ahead and check, check his channel out. He's got a, a lot of audio stuff to cover and uh, probably more than me. Uh, you know, he unboxes stuff uh, every so often. On his channel, it's more about the knowledge than anything else. It's not about, you know, anything fancy like that in terms of video, but... Uh, if you want all the knowledge and if you want all the good stuff, go and check his channel out. I highly recommend that. Um, I've done the HE300's uh, impression kind of a video on his channel as well. So you guys should check that out as well. So you guys have two videos to watch. I hope you enjoyed this uh, kind of a guest review kind of a thing. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Audio uh, related stuff is a lot of fun. If you, I hope you guys get into audio someday and uh, enjoy high five. High five. <laughs> uh, enjoy high five. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, uh, and, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time, um, with, uh, probably another video. I'll, I'm getting the iPhone 5, 5, uh, 5S and 5C for review someday or the other, so I'll be doing that review as well. Uh, and then I've got a uh, how did it evolve video to do as well. I've got a new series to put on as well. I've got one video ready, but I still still have to do some uh, some other things uh, to make it even more perfect. So a lot of stuff is remaining. Uh, uh, so yeah, stay tuned to the channel. I'll try to do my best to get everything on and ready on the channel. Uh, the next how did it evolve video is gonna be based on audio as well. It's gonna be a very very interesting video. So w what I want you guys to do is wait and wait. <laughs> Thank thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. You on your former shit And you could call me Columbus Cause I'm exploring this former shit Taraco Dana watch me as the chorus hit